from a champion trainer like yourself, the jockeys, what have been some of the standout moments on the show from your perspective? Well, I think uh, I was heavily involved in it, it's it, it, it getting off the ground, and we did a had some work a couple of years ago now where they spent a month filming and putting something together, which led to the the champion show coming to fruition. And the last year, they spent a lot of time with my, my team, with me, well, the whole last year really, and obviously other people, jockeys, trainers, and one thing or another. And I, I think I was keen to do it because it just gets over the message. You know, the people don't understand about racing, the behind the scenes, how hard the, the staff work, how well the horses are cared for. For example, in the first first uh, program we saw Frodo on, you know, going off to a new life. And uh, one of the biggest things about racehorses is half their racing, their life is racing. The other half, they can do something else. And we always find a, you know, really good home for them if we can. Um, and Frodo was a great example of just how much he's loved and how much he's gone into a new home and how much the, cast, the staff care about them. And, I think the whole thing all the way through is bringing out characters in the game, whether it's trainers, owners, jockeys, how competitive it is, and just basically what a great sport it is. You know, obviously I'm very passionate about it, but I, I do think uh, the general public perhaps don't know what goes on behind the scenes and how much the staff, the people, the horses are all, all looked after and how many characters there are in the game. So any positivity that we can get across is really good. So I was always keen to, to be involved. And it's captured your almost addictiveness to winning that you've described as you are addicted to winning in the show. What are some of your favorite moments from your stable that have been portrayed on the show in terms of the races? <laughs> well, there's plenty to come. If you watch the next uh, th uh, four episodes starting this Friday, um, you'll see a lot of it, you know, but at the end of the day, uh, it's, we're in this to win, you know, we're, we're working hard, everyone behind the scenes, everybody, you know, from the owners investing in it, we, you know, we want to win. It's a sport, and the whole whole point in my eyes of of competing is trying to win. If you can, obviously, of course, you're not going to win all the time. But if you, the yeah, whole the winning sort of mentality passes through the whole team. And I mean, if you talk to Alex Ferguson, I doubt you, you do regularly on this show that you know how much his passion for winning was, and you know, almost he'd agree with me that it's almost finishing second is nowhere. No one ever remembers who finishes second. And if for all the hours of hard work every put, that he puts in, we do our best to try and get everything right to win. And yeah, we're competitive and passionate about it, as are all my team. And just touch upon the, obviously you have a very special relationship with the horses themselves. Like you mentioned, mm -hmm. they are they're bred to win. But the jockeys mm -hmm. as well, you put so much faith in them in, in bringing home trophies. And, you know, it's it's not a, it's not the safest sport in the world as it's shown on, on the mm. show where there is a large element of danger. Just talk about the relationship with, with the jockeys. Well, any competitive sport, there's an element of danger, without a doubt. You know, we know that, and you've just got to minimise the risk to both horse jockeys, um, which I think we are, do really do. Um, but, you know, relationship with jockeys, you need a good stable jockey, and I'm incredibly lucky to have had some of the very best jockeys riding for me over the years, you know, headed up by Ruby Walsh. Um, I think he rode for me 14 to 15 years and rode some amazing horses, like Denman, Big Butts, Cordo Star, Neptune Colonge. He's been brilliant. And now we're lucky to have a young man in Harry Cobden who's champion jockey last year. I think it's the first time actually we've had a champion jockey as our stable jockey. So that's very good. And everyone's getting insight into his life and you know, how hard he works and how hard all the jockeys work. And at the end of the day, you know, no matter how much ability any of those jockeys have got, you need good horses to be riding and be in a position like Harry to be riding good horses. And for me also to be in a position to have Harry riding our horses. So you have to have a good relationship with your stable jockey. Harry is very much a team player, as you've probably seen that comes through. And we're in a lucky position to be. And just in terms of characteristics that you need to succeed in that world, particularly in your position, I'm guessing you have to have a great deal of patience and resilience when things don't go your way, when there's injuries to horses to jockeys and you have to rearrange plans on the fly on the go just talk about those characteristics that people won't see but they will start to see when they're watching the show yeah obviously every day is different and we have to deal with a whole multitude of things you know weather injuries illness all sorts of different things and um 
No, it's a 24-7 job. You know, the horses need looking after 24-7. The jockeys almost need looking after 24-7. The whole team do. And if things go wrong, the jockeys get injured, horses get injured, and you have to look after everybody, inform your owners, inform the public. There's a lot involved in it, you know, keeping everybody uh, really informed of what's happening. And um, it, it's, you know, they're not machines. You don't put petrol in and turn the key and off they go. There's a lot goes on behind the scenes to get those horses fit and healthy to run. The jockeys would be the same. And, yeah, you just need a lot of luck. And obviously, you're not going to win all the time. Of course, you're not, you know. Um, so if you look at our strike rate, normally over the last few years, it's 24 25%. Um, that means one in four will win and three out of four won't win. So you have to deal with winning and, you know, and losing. It's all part of thing. You know, any man can um, can win. So it takes a good man to lose. And that applies across the board. You have to, move, you know, move on to the next day. And um, you can, I remember Boxing Day this year, Harold, I know we had a, not a terrible day, but you, I think we had five or six seconds throughout the whole day, including the second of the King George. You think, oh, no. Then the next day, I think we had three or four winners. You always got to look forward and be positive.